Hi Pascal, thanks a lot for, uh, for coming into our office for another chat. My pleasure. Um, this is now, uh, you're two years into Amdocs, last time we spoke you were, yes. you were six months, so I'm really interested in an update and I guess a, a really telling thing is you've, you've been two years in a, um, a large, what is a large company and you've still got the same job title which is a, unusual. unusual and a very good continuity, VP Consulting EMEA. Um, well, what, what's your job entail these days? Oh, um, I mean, first of all, you know, the, the word consulting in, in Andox means actually pure consulting, but also the, uh, the customer facing part of systems integration. So effectively, my group uh, delivers uh, um, consulting engagements, but also um, the, uh, the part that uh, is directly visible to customers around system integration projects, and obviously typically system integration projects uh, based, to, uh, based on Amdocs products. Okay. And um, what, what, what's the main business focus of Amdocs these days? It remains, uh, you know, operators, uh, communication uh, service providers, um, uh, but that, that notion obviously extends to uh, beyond the, the traditional telcos and into uh, into all kinds of service providers. We've, we've uh, Web 2.0 obviously a, a number of new players are coming in. And interestingly enough, Amdox is uh, used to be selling primarily to the, the large uh, telcos, um, but uh, increasingly is also addressing the uh, uh, the smaller. Uh, service providers, even MVNOs and, and, and the like. So we've sort of expanded our, uh, our addressable market recently. And the, the whole definition of, a, of, a, of an operator has changed though now these days. And how, how does Amdocs cope with that? Because it's been around in the business a while, delivering as a leader the traditional services. Yes. How, how can it move from that to these and new? You're right. And, and obviously, one needs to uh, to be uh, quick on their feet to, to, to adapt to that. Even some of our traditional uh, uh, customers are, are sort of changing their business model. They're sort of breaking themselves up or, you know, partnering and, and uh, you know, from network operators sharing networks to people spinning off their, their retail arm to... Um, so it, it's constantly moving and obviously we have to move with them. Uh, all, I'm not saying there, there, there's an easy answer, except that uh, what works one year with one operator may not work the, um, the, the, the second year. And so we're constantly reviewing um, f fundamentally our engagement model because I mean, you know, the, the, the base is still you know, the software and the services that, that revolve around that, but then how we take that to market and how that market is changing obviously forces us to change as well. And how does your consulting role play into that? Uh, in, in, in two ways. One is obviously there is the, you know, the traditional business of, uh, of uh, selling and delivering consulting and system integration services around Amdocs products. So let's sort of a, call it a, a bread and butter. Um, <clears throat> but the more interesting bit is when we lead with consulting, meaning there's no Amdocs products, not even maybe any Amdocs presence at all in accounts, and where we lead with uh, uh, consulting engagements. For example, we go into uh, into some parts uh, of operators and we'll say, uh, let, give, give me a, a few weeks to um, assess how we can save you X percent on a particular business process. For example, we go in and, and, and do uh, what we call the, uh, the three-week challenge to look at, um, uh, for example, a process like uh, first-time resolution for some call resolution in call centers. Mm -hmm. And within three weeks, we typically come up with goodies around um, how, uh, how we can say that. The reason we can do that is because not only, obviously, we know the process and we know the business, but we also typically understand some of the underlying infrastructure systems um, that support that, and in, immediately we can spot where, where the savings are. But that's an easy game for you, isn't it? Because you can then just go and the client then pays you uh, X million dollars for the new systems, mm -hmm. and, and, you, and you, well, you're right. I mean, there, there's always the uh, the view that says that uh, in the end it's a system change, and which system is Amdocs. And in reality, no. We we do that in uh, in places where there's no Amdocs products, and where frankly the intention is not so much to to put an Amdocs system, is 
what we're trying to do here is just to leverage the, the very deep industry expertise. Um, in general, in general, it, it, the answer is it depends. In general, um, we sell, if you want, uh, services, um, and then we measured on uh, on the outcome of delivering the services. Um, but there are cases, and actually increasingly uh, some, where we actually willing to go beyond that, the traditional model of a vendor model, and where we take um, actually a risk reward scheme that is linked not to, if you want, the traditional IT performance, meaning I delivered this system on time and you know to your, to your satisfaction of your requirements and the system runs and. You know, it's it's uh, it's available 99.9% of the time, and so on. So, with the typical IT metrics, you no, know, we actually take risk reward uh, uh, scheme on the satisfaction of business performance. Meaning, for example, if uh, I use the example of first time call resolution, if we can improve the percentage of first time call resolution by X percent, a part of uh, of our uh, you know, financial rewards would be linked to that. So we, we tie, if you want, our financial success to the customer's uh, success. We can only do that in certain cases, obviously, where we feel that we have enough uh, uh, influence and control over what's going on. But that's, that's an interesting uh, uh, change in our engagement model is we, we go more and more towards um, what we call business benefit realization schemes. Oh, okay. I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed uh, how much would go there. That's, that's uh, a big step. It's, um, uh, it, it's a question of confidence, meaning that uh, if, if we're confident that we can achieve that for a customer, then we're willing to take the risk. Okay. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's rather new in terms of engagement model, and I'm not saying we're doing that everywhere, but uh, certainly the, the, the company wants to leverage its industry expertise to be able to differentiate itself on offering these kind of deals, because frankly that sets us apart. Well, that, uh, that plays right back into your consulting role. Absolutely. So you're, you're end-to-end on uh, that. Uh, you know, the consulting part plays a lead role both at the beginning of these engagements, obviously, to uh, understand the, you know, the business issues, the KPIs around uh, uh, operational processes, and, and agree with the customer about you know, what can be done. And then, obviously, during the implementation aspect of it, when I say implementation, it's not just the systems part, it's also the business process changes, the organizational changes, and anything that has the you know, user reskilling and so on and so forth. We obviously also play a very significant role. So, um, yes, the, the consulting arm of Amdocs is, is quite instrumental in, the, in, the, uh, in this kind of project. So, so increase the, uh, your long term tenure of uh, clients? Well, it's actually pretty long term already, but um, uh, what I mean by that is because we, we tend to have people who've been around. Uh, who are not juniors out of university and who don't that you know I'm just being only in, in one vertical industry, the communication industry. Uh, we tend to have people who are on average more experienced than, than maybe some of our competitors. These people uh, typically customers want to hang on to, in other words, they don't want to, to see them go to other projects. So we, we tend to have a fairly long tenures in, um, in in projects. But with, with the added uh, uh, dimension of business benefit realization, we have to stick around, if I may use this term, until we can see the business benefits. Meaning, so it's not like a one-time job, I'll deliver something and I go, you have to stick around during the actual uh, uh, production uh, phase and, and then monitoring the, the business results. So yes, that, that sort of gives us uh, that, that longer ten tenure. But I think, um, you know, you're right. Well, look, look forward to the next update. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.